purpose. The title is Purpose and Predestination. And before I bring the word, Brother Eddie will bring a powerful song. So let's enjoy the song ministration. We are taking the word from Job chapter 7, verses number 1. The book of Job chapter 7, verse number 1. If you were uh, sitting right there, just close your eyes. And there is no purpose if there is no rain for you. So if you close your eyes and just sing along with me below. Let it rain. Let it rain. Jesus. Let me talk in a language that everybody will understand. A word that will come to turn our lives around and help us to stay on purpose. Help each one of us to discover your predetermination counsel for our lives. 
So we'll pursue it and live a fulfilled life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The Bible started with a question in this chapter. It says, Has no man an appointed days on earth? And are not his days like the days of an island? Today, again, I'm sharing with you purpose and predestination. Check, purpose is the reason for which something exists. Purpose is the reason for which something exists. For instance, when we talk of purpose, we are talking about why of a thing or the reason for a thing. When we talk of predestination, predestination is the doctrine that all events have been willed by God. All events have been willed by God. In other words, nothing takes God by surprise. That is predestination. And I'm sharing with you purpose and predestination. Job started his chapter with a question. And the question is, has no man an appointed days on earth? Are not his days like the days of an island? Changing this question into statement, it becomes man has appointed days on earth. His days are the days of an island. And God brought me here to let you understand, church. You have appointed days on earth. Amen. And your days are like the days of an island. What I want you to understand is you came to this world by birth. Mm -hmm. And you certainly go by death. Yes. That's why it says man has appointed days on earth. And his days are like the days of an island. For instance, Hebrews chapter, chapter 9 verse number 27. It says it is appointed unto everyone to die once. After that, after that judgment. James chapter 4 verse number 6, 14. James 4 14. It asks, man, what is your life? It is just like vapor. That appears for a little season and vanishes away. So you are not going to live here forever, church. You are not going to live here eternally. You came here by appointment, and by same set appointment by God, you will leave this earth. Mm -hmm. But then let's analyze Job chapter 7 verse 1. It says, man has appointed days on earth, and his days are like the days of an island. Another word for a highland is a worker. Another word for a highland is a laborer. Another word for a highland is an employee. So he said that man life on earth here is like an highland, meaning you are like an employee. You are like a worker. You are like a laborer. And three important things is associated with every highland, with every worker, with every employee. I want to bring to your attention. Church, I want you to understand that because you are a highland, three things is associated to your life. Three things characterize every highland or every employee. Number one, every employee Every employee has a specific work to do. Every highland is given a specific work to do. When you are hired at a job you were doing, when I went to work for Bank of America, I started as sales and service specialist. And my job description was clearly defined to me. Every highland is given a specific work. The question I'm posing to you is, what is the specific work Father God has given to you when he brought you here on earth? I tell you every now and then, everything created serves a purpose. My microphone helps me to be heard louder and clearer. My glasses helps me to be able to read better. My dress helps me to get warm and come at things I only want other people to see. You see, everything here in this world serves a purpose. So it so happened, church, that one day, Father God saw a problem on this earth and realized
realize you are the only person who can create or solve that problem. And that is why you were created. Amen. Even if your parents did not marry, even if your father was a player, mm -hmm. and so he tricked your mom, he deceived your mom, and out of that you were born. Even if your mother was raped, I want you to understand no best was accidental. They were divinely orchestrated by Father God. It is not the sexual intercourse that brought you to this world. It was just a medium. Father God had preordained that you are born. So your parents coming together was just going to serve as a medium, as a channel. You came here by divine appointment. And as a Libra, there is something specific Father God want you to do. Yes. Yes, <clears throat> Now listen, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. God told Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. Before Jeremiah would even be born, God knew him in the womb. And the same is applicable to each one of us, church, each one of us. Before we were born, God knew us. Amen. And God set us apart, even in our mother's womb. In Isaiah chapter 49, verse number 1, he said, The Lord has called me from the womb. From his mother's womb, the Lord called him. So I want you to understand, church, your upbringing, the way you grew up, the schools you attended, mm -hmm. even the hurts and the pain, they are all coming together so that you will end up fulfilling God's purpose yes. for your life. Hallelujah. Is somebody understanding me? Amen. In Galatians chapter 1 verse number 15, Paul said, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace. So you see, before he was in his mother's womb, God separated him. So it was not on the road of Damascus, that is when God called him. God called him before he was born. I want you to understand that before you came to this world, Father God had an awesome plan for you. Yes. Maybe somebody invited you to family cathedral, but your coming here is not because somebody invited you, Father God divinely orchestrated that through you, something good will go on in family cathedral. Yes. The person inviting you was just a medium mm -hmm. so that you come and do what Father God destined you to do here. Amen. Yes. And I want you to understand, church, the reason why you should understand this is that a laborer is giving a specific work. Mm -hmm. is because the things that you are going to do is linked to the destinies of many people. Mm -hmm. So much so that if you fail to fulfill purpose, you have no idea how many people you are going to hurt. Mm -hmm. You have no idea how much you are going to disappoint the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says children are God's heritage. Another version says children are God's investment. Anytime people are born into this world, Father God invests in them. He invests in them because he's the God of predestination. Everything that happens is willed by him. So the job that you are doing now, the places that you are even going to live eventually, mm -hmm. they have all been orchestrated by Father God. Amen. For instance, that's why Jesus Christ, Bible described him as the lamb which was slain mm -hmm. before the foundations of the world. Which means that before the heavens and earth were created, Jesus Christ had already been killed. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus Christ was walking on the streets of Galilee and he was being led to Golgotha, it was something that has happened already before the foundations of the world. That's why he was so bold and courageous. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days' time, I'll raise it up. He said, I have power to lay down my life, and I have the power to take it up again. Because it is something that had been done long before he was born. Bible says, no, not to God, are all his purposes from the foundations of the world. So, the things that you are doing, the things that you did before, 
and the things that you are going to do eventually, they are all going to come together to fulfill God's purpose and predestination for your life. Let me quote one more scripture. Psalm 139, verses 13. Listen to this. It says, For you formed my inward parts. Yes. Yes. You covered me in my mother's womb. Yes, Lord. Then verse 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Yes. Then verse 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Listen to verse 16. Your eyes saw my substance, be yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. When as yet there were none of them, when there were, was no people, when there were not even your parents, God has written about you in the volumes of his book. The things that you are supposed to do here on earth. So church, God brought me here to let you understand, you dare not disappoint God. Mm, when I was growing up, right, I used to think that whatever I do, or whatever I don't do, is up to me alone. But over time, he has opened my eyes for me to understand that whatever I do, whatever I don't do, it will go a long way to affect people around me, even the generations yet unborn. Don't you understand, church? How many times do I have to tell you this? That because Adam and his wife Eve disobeyed God, that's why sin entered into the world and affects everybody. Because Jesus obeyed his father, that is why grace came into this world. And we can call ourselves children of God. How many times have I told you, one day Gehazi sinned against God. And the prophet of God told him, because of what you have done, you, somebody say you. You. The prophet told him, you and all your descendants will become leprous. Haven't you read in the Bible, in the famous Ten Commandments, Bible says God visited the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generations. And then he blessed to the thousands. So you see, your obedience or your disobedience is never personal. Whatever you do or whatever you don't do, church, it will never end with you alone. When you understand this, you will not stay at home when you have to come to church, knowing that whatever you do is linked to the destinies of others. When you understand this, when God burden you to start a job, start your own business, you will never sit down there and become scary, knowing that your destiny, the destinies of several people, is hooked and directly connected to the job you are going to do. Amen. Amen. I pray for you that the eyes of your spiritual understanding will be enlightened. For you to know that you didn't come to this earth by accident. This morning, you have not come to family cathedral by accident. This morning, the things that you are doing in life, Father God wants me to let you understand that you are not doing that by accident. It is by providence. It is divinely orchestrated, directed by God. Amen. Amen. So ask yourself, what is the specific thing Father God has destined you to do? The problem with many of us is because we are not doing big things, we think what we are doing is insignificant. Understand, not everybody is called to the front line battle. Some are there to give support and shelter to them that are at the front line. Not everybody can do the same thing. Even the human body, you realize they have different parts. And each one of them plays a very important role. The fact that the ears hear doesn't make it better than the eyes which sees. The fact that the eye sees doesn't make the eyes better than the feet that walks. The fact that the mouth speaks doesn't make the mouth better than the other parts of the body. Same way, what you are doing may be minute, may be tiny, may be small, but it doesn't make somebody better than you. Amen. All that you need to do is to identify what Father God has asked you to do mm -hmm. and do it very well. Diligent in doing what you are destined to do is going to affect the lives of many people and it will bring glory to God. Is somebody understanding me? So first and foremost, identify 
why God created you, why God brought you here on this earth. What is it that Father God wanted to do? Amen. Amen. I identified my long time ago when I was 14 years old. Because when God saved me when I was 14 years old, He also told me He's going to make me a Bible teacher. He will let me say things that people, including pastors, may not even know. And that explains why I put a lot of emphasis on recording so my messages will be on YouTube. That's why I write books. I don't write for showmanship. I don't write so that people will think I am the best. I write to do education. I write to bring information. I write to bring illumination. Because that is what Father God wants me to do. And you see, one thing the Lord has taught me is to learn to stay in my lane. The problem with many of us is we are not staying in our lane. We want to be like other people. Because that sister sings, you also want to sing. Because that man writes, you also want to write. Because that preacher preaches and shouts and screams, you also want to do the same. Because that person preaches and combines his preaching with prophecy, you also want to do the same. Everybody, learn to stay in your lane. If we learn to stay in our lane, it will become a beautiful place to the, to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We are not here for competition, church. We are here for completing. We are here to complete the task Father God assigned each one of us to do. So it doesn't matter who can sing better. It doesn't matter who can preach better. It doesn't matter who has bigger congregation or who has smaller congregation. What is more important is have you identified why Father God brought you here on earth to do? Amen. Amen. I've carefully studied the Bible. One of the disciples of Jesus Christ called Andrew. Andrew, we never heard him doing so many extraordinary things. All that he did is that he brought Simon Peter, his brother, to Christ. That's all that is recorded Andrew did. Do you know that on the day of Pentecost when Peter preached, as many as 3,000 people got saved? Again, when he preached in Acts chapter 3, as many as 5,000 people got saved. Which means that Peter's two sermons brought 8,000 people to Christ. Could you believe that? But behind the success of Peter, there was an Andrew. If God is a rewarder, this same God who is going to reward Peter, don't you know he will reward Andrew as well? Because Peter's destiny was linked to what Andrew did. If Andrew had not brought Simon Peter to Jesus, what was going to happen? You have no idea the chances you are missing when you are not talking to people about Jesus. You have no idea the problems you are causing when you are not maximizing your potential, your strength, and your ability. Because again, it is linked to the destinies of many people. To many people. Amen. Amen. A lepra, a highland, is given a specific work to do. What is the specific work Father God has entrusted into your hands? Then the second thing which you should never forget. A lepra is given a time limit to finish their assignment or his assignment. A highland is given a time limit so because you are a highland, because you are an employee, you have a time limit to finish your work. Never you think that you are going to live on this earth forever. Amen. The fact that your grandparents died is an indication that you die one day. If your parents are dead, if your mother is dead or your father is dead, it bears eloquent testimony to the fact that you also die one day. If you know somebody who is dead, it's an indication that you also die one day. What I'm trying to do is not to scare you with death, but to quickly remind you that you will not live here forever. Amen. You've been given a specific work to do, and you have a time limit to complete what you are supposed to do. For instance, Jesus Christ lived for only 33 years. 33 years, church. David, the man after God's own heart, he lived for 70 years, only 70 years. Moses, the biggest man on earth, he lived for 120 years. These people were all special and unique in the eyes of God, but they never lived forever. So what makes you think you live forever? Jesus had three years to finish his assignment, to do his work. Moses had 40 years to lead the Israelites. David had 40 years to rule God's people. Seven years he ruled in Hebron. And 33 years he ruled in all Israel. You have specific 
time to finish your assignment. When you understand this, you will sit up. Many of us, we live our lives as if we will never die. Many of us, we live our lives as if because we saw tomorrow, we will certainly see another tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. So what you need to do is to sit up, find out what God wants you to do, so that you will do it. Because you are in a highland, it is said that a highland is given a time limit to finish their assignments. Because we are human beings, and we are short-sighted, and we are limited, we are handicapped, we may not know the time allotted for us to finish our work. And that is why we need to sit up. The Bible says, redeem the time, for the days are evil. Redeem the time, you buy the time. The time that you have lost, quickly recover it. Yeah. Do something, get involved. Jesus said, occupy mm -hmm. till I come. Yeah. Don't sit down there and don't do anything. Amen. Amen. And then finally, a laborer is rewarded for the work they do. Because we're in Highland, there is a reward for you, for the work assigned to you. And I want you to understand, a day is coming when Jesus Christ is going to reward each one of us for the work entrusted into our hands. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, it says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I'm sorry, that is Revelation chapter 22, verse number 12. Revelation 22, verse number 12. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. It says, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and he will reward each person according to his works. So church, analyze this. When you are standing before God, and is rewarding you for your work. What account are you going to give him? What did you do that will let you get reward from Father God? I want you to begin to think you are a highland. And because we're a highland, remember a day of accountability is coming. A day of reckoning is coming. Where each one of us will stand before God and render account to him as to the things we did for him here on earth. Severally, we are scared to fail, so we don't use the gifts, the strengths, the abilities, the potentials, the charisma Father God has deposited in us. I want you to understand, I keep on saying this and I'll say it again. In his book, My Life, Bill Clinton said, I prefer failure to a worldly cause than inaction for fear of failure. You fail so hard, try again. One good thing about failure is that it is a proof that you try to do something. How many times have I told you that another good thing about failure is that it tells you to do it again, this time in a more careful, more intelligent, and more matured way. There is no guarantee of success in anything that you do. But not to try is to guarantee failure. And I tell you, failure is not the absence of success. It is the neglect of trying. So try, keep on trying. Amen. Amen. You have no idea how many times you failed when you tried to walk as a child. But you never gave up. You kept on walking and now you can walk. Which means that everything Father God has assigned you to do, if you do and you do it well, eventually it will become big and it will bring glory to his name. And also remember, little things always become great things when they are done to please God. So what God has given to you may be little, but you see, as you keep on doing it to please God, then you bring enlargement, then you bring expansion, then you bring promotion, and it will affect many lives. Even our Father God, when He started His creation, don't you understand in His capacity as the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God, He could have created the world we see today with all the infrastructure amenities with all the technological advancements, but he didn't do that. He started with Adam and his Eve, Adam and his wife Eve, and put them in a garden surrounded with raw materials. An indication that Father God didn't start small, but he didn't end small. Even Jesus, he started with only 
one disciple called Andrew, and Andrew brought Simon Peter, and then the sons of Zebedee, James and John, also joined, and then they became 12, and then they became 70. Other women came and joined them, and then they became 120, and then they became 500, and they became 4,000, 5,000, and today people from all walks of life have given their lives to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ compared the kingdom of God to the master seed. He says it is something that starts small, but it doesn't end small. So church, whatever you are doing, whether business, whether talking to people about Jesus, whether singing at church, you may start small, but hey, don't end small. As you do it with all your heart, faithfully, then God will add his blessings and it becomes big. Job know this. So in Job chapter 8, verse number 7, he says, though my beginning may be small, mm. my latter end will be greatly okay. increased. Yes. I'm here to prophesy to somebody mm. that your latter end will be increased. Yeah. Your latter end is going to become bigger. Your latter end will blow your mind. Yes. Your latter end, maybe you started, nobody knew you. God will make you a star out of scarcity. All that you need to do is diligently follow what God has entrusted to you. I pray for you that you will always remember that on earth you have been given appointed time and your days are like the days of an island. Again, Job chapter 7 verse number 1. It says, man has appointed days on earth and his days are like the days of an island. And I quickly reminded you, three things characterize a highland. Number one, a highland is given a specific work to do. Number two, a highland is given a time limit to accomplish his work. And number three, a highland is rewarded for his work. Amen. May God help us Amen. that we we'll live up to expectation and will not sit down there and not do anything. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Say this after me, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, your word has come to me. Your word has come to me. Help me this morning. Help me this morning. Make me a practitioner. Make me a practitioner of your word. Of your word. Help me to understand. Help me to understand that although you started small, although you started small, you never ended small. You never ended small. Help me to persevere. Help me to persevere. Help me to keep on keeping on. Help me to keep on keeping on. So my life will bring glory. So that my life will bring glory. And praise. And praise. To your name. To your name. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Round of applause.